If you have a website, then it's essential that you have Google Analytics connected. With Google Analytics, you can simply measure conversions, leads, and other important activities and goals happening on your website every day. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here today, my name's Stuart, thanks for joining me. In this Google Analytics tutorial for beginners, I'm gonna walk you through how to set up goals so you can measure your website's performance for your small business. Now, if you are completely new to Google Analytics, feel free to click the link above and that will take you to a comprehensive beginner's guide to understanding your Google Analytics account. And just quickly before we get started, and if you're new here today, consider subscribing to stay updated with weekly and actionable videos and tutorials designed to help your small business thrive online. And with that said, let's set up your goals with Google Analytics. Okay, so here we are at our Google Analytics dashboard. So the first thing you need to do is sign into your Google Analytics account and head over to your dashboard. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna use one of our client's websites and we're gonna set up a conversion-based goal for our client so we can measure how many people submit a form. Now, a conversion for this client is actually a lead because when someone enters their information into a quote form, this goal that we're gonna set up is gonna be triggered when that individual lands on the thank you page. And this is one of the easiest goals to set up and anyone can do it. And it's one of the most important goals because you wanna start measuring the conversions or leads that are happening on your website when people submit a form, complete a purchase, or sign up to your newsletter. So there's many types of conversions and leads we can measure, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna focus on the destination goal. Now, before we head over to goals and I walk you through how you can create your first goal so you can measure your website performance, I just wanna mention again that if you are a complete beginner, make sure you watch our comprehensive beginners tutorial on how you can understand Google Analytics because you first wanna have a basic understanding of how Google Analytics works before you set up and create your own goals. And with that covered, let's create your first goal. So to do that, all we need to do is navigate down to admin and click here. And then you wanna come up here and make sure you're on the right account. Then just navigate over to goals. And here we wanna create our first goal. So to do that, just head over to new goal. Now the first thing we want to do is set up our goal. Now we have the option to choose a pre-made template that already has a pre-filled configuration. But for the purpose of this beginner's tutorial, we want to create one from scratch so you have an idea of how goals work and how you can create your own custom goals. So select custom and then come down here and click continue. Now for us, we want to measure conversions in the form of leads. Now what do I mean by this? Well, for this particular client, they have a quote page. When a potential customer fills out their information on the quote page and clicks send, they arrive at a thank you page and that whole process of them submitting their information is a potential lead to the business and that's what we want to measure. So the name of this goal is going to be called form submissions and in brackets leads because we want to measure the amount of forms that are being submitted and these are counted towards leads. And then down here we have goal slot ID and this is just essentially for you to manage your goals. When you have dozens of goals, you can manage them all in one place under different sets. So for example, we can have up to 20 goals and four different sets. This is just a place for when you create more goals in the future. So for now, we're just gonna to stick to goal ID one and the next step is one of the most important steps and this is the type of goal that you wanna create. And this is how you measure your goal. So for example, destination, which is what we're gonna to choose today, is when a customer or a visitor on your website reaches a certain page. So this is great for goals because essentially if someone fills out their information and then they click submit and then they get sent to a thank you page, when they reach that thank you page, that is considered as a conversion or a lead generated. So essentially the destination goal type is when someone, a visitor, a customer, reaches a specific page on your website. And then down here we have the duration goal type. And this is basically how long a session lasts. So for example, if you want a session to last at least five minutes, maybe you have a blog post and you want people to stay for at least five to 10 minutes. So that goal is complete when a session lasts five minutes or longer. So the duration goal is essentially measuring user sessions. Then if we come down here, we have pages. 
and this is quite self-explanatory for example pages slash screens per session so for example your goal could be complete when a visitor reaches three pages and then we have event down here and this is more advanced and for tracking specific actions on your website but for the purpose of this beginners tutorial we're going to select destination because we want to measure leads and conversions so once you've selected destination come down here and click continue and here we are on the third step we've nearly completed creating our first goal now what we need to do is head over to destination and come down here and select regular expression now what we need to do is add the page that your visitors will land on once they've completed a conversion or they've become a lead so for example with the website we're going to be using we need to look for the thank you page because once they enter their information they will land on a thank you page and that's how we measure a conversion so if we head over to the website here we can find their thank you page. Now this is the page that customers land on or potential customers land on when they enter their information in the get a quote page. And then all we need to do is navigate over to the URL and copy this particular destination. This URL takes people to the thank you page. So we wanna copy this URL and head back over to Google Analytics. And then we wanna come down here and enter the URL that we just copied in here. Then what we can do is delete the website itself because that's already recorded and then come down here and click verify this goal to see that it's working. And as you can see this goal is verified and you can tell because we get this information here. This goal would have a 2.38% conversion rate based on your data from the past 7 days. So we can tell that that is working with that figure there. Now before we click save and complete the setup of our first goal, we have two other options. We've got value and funnel. Now the value option is if you have a monetary value associated with this conversion. Now for our example, this is generating leads. So when someone submits the information, this is captured as a lead and they arrive at the thank you page. But there's no monetary value. You know, we can't say that customer is worth $500, $1,000, $20. We're not too sure because every customer is different. However, if it was an e-commerce website, so if you're selling products online, and maybe the value of your products were similar across the board, or you're only selling one type of product, then you could go on and add the monetary value of that conversion say it could be a hundred dollars you sold a product they landed on the thank you page or the page after they've entered their payment information and the sale has gone through and they paid a hundred dollars so that's how you can measure the value of each conversion now on the other hand if you sell multiple products and they all have different pricing points then you can't use this value here because you can only select one value for one specific transaction. Now there's a more advanced way that you can actually measure and track conversions under the advanced e-commerce analytics but we're not going to discuss that today we'll have to talk about that in another tutorial. So for now we're going to turn this off. And the final option can be very powerful and is great for e-commerce based websites if you're selling products online is your funnel, is your sales funnel. So if we turn that on, for example, we could create a whole bunch of steps so we can see exactly how far that customer got or potential customer got through our funnel, through our sales funnel. For example, if they didn't quite make it to the thank you page and we were selling products online, maybe they got to the checkout page or maybe they got to the shipment page or payment page. With the funnel we can identify exactly where that customer left within the funnel without converting. Now for the purpose of this tutorial what I've done is I've quickly created an example of what the funnel would look like down here if we were measuring conversions for an e-commerce website if you're selling products online. So if we come down here you can see that there are four steps. We've got the add to cart, email and address, shipping and payment. Now these are the four pages that they would arrive on before they made this conversion. Now I can come over here and click required because adding the product to cart is required for them to initiate this sales funnel. And then once they've completed the payment and they've converted, that is measured as a conversion, as a goal. And down here we can just measure the funnel. So we can see where people leave. For example, we might see that 
four out of a hundred people arrived on shipping but they didn't fill out their shipping information and therefore didn't arrive at payment and did not convert so adding funnel allows you to monitor the sales funnel and understand the behavior of each level so i hope that makes sense now for us and because of the nature of our goal which is form submissions we don't actually need a sales funnel in place so we're going to turn that off but the option is there especially if you're an e-commerce website so for now we're going to select off and then come down here and click save as we've entered all the information we need to set up our goal our first goal and congratulations you have just completed and created your first goal now to simply add a new goal you can just come up here and click new goal now to have a look at your goals all you need to do is head over to your dashboard home and here on your dashboard, all you need to do is navigate down to the bottom and here you can see your goals and how they are performing. So you can see your goals down here, the number of goals you've got per week, or you can change the period over here to custom, or you can choose the date range here. So we'll leave that at seven days. And again, you can measure your conversions here. Then what we can do is we can also navigate over to conversions on the left hand side and then click on goals and then click overview. And this just gives you the full rundown on how your goals are performing. Now, remember we talked about the funnel. You can also come down here and click funnel visualization to view how your funnel is going. But remember, we didn't actually create a funnel, so we have no funnel to view here. But it's quite cool to see uh, your funnel in action and you can actually measure and identify where people are leaving your sales funnel. And that is essentially all you need to know for managing your goals within Google Analytics. Very easy to create and monitor your goals within Google Analytics. And there we have it. That is it for this Google Analytics tutorial for beginners. You should now be comfortable with setting up your own goals within Google Analytics. Now, if you have any questions, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. If you got value and you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like below the video. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys.